rubidium. Rubidium is a chemical element with symbol RB and atomic number 37. Rubidium is a soft, silvery white metallic element of the alkali metal group, with a standard atomic weight of 85.4678. Elemental rubidium is highly reactive, with properties similar to those of other alkali metals, including rapid oxidation in air. On Earth, natural rubidium comprises two isotopes, 72% is the stable isotope, 85RB, 28% is the slightly radioactive 87RB, with a half-life of 49 billion years more than three times longer than the estimated age of the universe. German chemists Robert Bunsen and Gustav Kirchhoff discovered rubidium in 1861 by the newly developed technique, flame spectroscopy. Rubidium's compounds have various chemical and electronic applications. Rubidium metal is easily vaporized and has a convenient spectral absorption range, making it a frequent target for laser manipulation of atoms. Rubidium is not a known nutrient for any living organisms. However, rubidium ions have the same charge as potassium ions, and are actively taken up and treated by animal cells in similar ways. Rubidium is a very soft, ductile, silvery white metal. It is the second most electropositive of the stable alkali metals and melts at a temperature of 39.3 degrees C. Like other alkali metals, rubidium metal reacts violently with water. As with potassium and cesium, this reaction is usually vigorous enough to ignite the hydrogen gas it produces. Rubidium has also been reported to ignite spontaneously in air. It forms amalgams with mercury and alloys with gold, iron, cesium, sodium, and potassium, but not lithium. Rubidium has a very low ionization energy of only 406 kJ mole. Rubidium and potassium show a very similar purple color in the flame test, and distinguishing the two elements requires more sophisticated analysis, such as spectroscopy. Rubidium chloride is probably the most used rubidium compound. Among several other chlorides, it is used to induce living cells to take up DNA, it is also used as a biomarker, because in nature, it is found only in small quantities in living organisms and when present, replaces potassium. Other common rubidium compounds are the corrosive rubidium hydroxide, the starting material for most rubidium-based chemical processes, rubidium carbonate, used in some optical glasses, and rubidium copper sulfate. RB2SO4QSO46H2O. Rubidium silver iodide has the highest room temperature conductivity of any known ionic crystal, a property exploited in thin film batteries and other applications. Rubidium forms a number of oxides when exposed to air, including rubidium monoxide, RB6O, and RB902. Rubidium in excess oxygen gives the superoxide RBO2. Rubidium forms salts with halides producing rubidium fluoride, rubidium chloride, rubidium bromide, and rubidium iodide. Although rubidium is monoisotopic, rubidium in the Earth's crust is composed of two isotopes, the stable 85RB and the radioactive 87RB. Natural rubidium is radioactive, with specific activity of about 670 bq g, enough to significantly expose a photographic film in 110 days. 24 additional rubidium isotopes have been synthesized with half-lives of less than three months, most are highly radioactive and have few uses. Rubidium-87 has a half-life of 7010488000000000000 black spade for 8.8 times 109 years, which is more than three times the age of the universe of 7010137990000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
then the age can be determined by measurement of the RB and senior concentrations and of the 87 senior 86 senior ratio. The dates indicate the true age of the minerals only if the rocks have not been subsequently altered. Rubidium 82, one of the element's non natural isotopes, is produced by electron capture decay of strontium 82 with a half life of 25.36 days. With a half life of 76 seconds, Rubidium-82 decays by positron emission to stable Krypton-82. Rubidium is the 23rd most abundant element in the Earth's crust, roughly as abundant as zinc and rather more common than copper. It occurs naturally in the minerals leucite, paleucite, carnalite, and psinvoltite, which contain as much as 1% rubidium oxide. Lepidolite contains between 0.3% and 3.5% rubidium, and is the commercial source of the element. Some potassium minerals and potassium chlorides also contain the element in commercially significant quantities. Seawater contains an average of 125 g/L of rubidium compared to the much higher value for potassium of 408 mg/L and the much lower value of 0.3 g/L for cesium. Because of its large ionic radius, rubidium is one of the incompatible elements. During magma crystallization, Rubidium is concentrated together with its heavier analog cesium in the liquid phase and crystallizes last. Therefore, the largest deposits of rubidium and cesium are zone pegmatite ore bodies formed by this enrichment process. Because rubidium substitutes for potassium in the crystallization of magma, the enrichment is far less effective than that of cesium. Zone pegmatite ore bodies containing mineable quantities of cesium as paleucite or the lithium minerals lepidolite are also a source for rubidium as a byproduct. Two notable sources of rubidium are the rich deposits of paleucite at Burnick Lake, Manitoba, Canada, and the Ruby Klein ALSI 308, found as impurities in paleucite on the Italian island of Elba, with a rubidium content of 17.5%. Both of those deposits are also sources of cesium. Although rubidium is more abundant in Earth's crust than cesium, the limited applications and the lack of a mineral rich in rubidium limits the production of rubidium compounds to 2 to 4 tons per year. Several methods are available for separating potassium, rubidium, and cesium. The fractional crystallization of a rubidium and cesium alum Al-212H2O yields after 30 subsequent steps pure rubidium alum. Two other methods are reported, the chlorostanate process and the ferrocyanide process. For several years in the 1950s and 1960s, a byproduct of potassium production called alcarb was a main source for rubidium. Alcarb contained 21% rubidium, with the rest being potassium and a small amount of cesium. Today the largest producers of cesium, such as the Tanko Mine, Manitoba, Canada, produce rubidium as a byproduct from paleucite. Rubidium was discovered in 1861 by Robert Bunsen and Gustav Kirchhoff, in Heidelberg, Germany, in the mineral lepidolite through spectroscopy. Because of the bright red lines in its emission spectrum, they chose a name derived from the Latin word rubigus, meaning deep red. Rubidium is a minor component in lepidolite. Kirchhoff and Bunsen processed 150 kg of a lepidolite containing only 0.24% rubidium oxide. Both potassium and rubidium form insoluble salts with chloroplatinic acid, but those salts show a slight difference in solubility in hot water. Therefore, the less soluble rubidium hexachloroplatinate could be obtained by fractional crystallization. After reduction of the hexachloroplatinate with hydrogen, the process yielded 0.51 grams of rubidium chloride for further studies. Bunsen and Kirchhoff began their first large-scale isolation of cesium and rubidium compounds with 44,000 liters of mineral water, which yielded 7.3 grams of cesium chloride and 9.2 grams of rubidium chloride. Rubidium was the second element, shortly after cesium, to be discovered by spectroscopy just one year after the invention of the spectroscope by Bunsen and Kirchhoff. The two scientists used the rubidium chloride to estimate that the atomic weight of the new element was 85.36. They tried to generate elemental rubidium by electrolysis of molten rubidium chloride, but instead of a metal, 
they obtained a blue homogeneous substance which neither under the naked eye nor under the microscope showed the slightest trace of metallic substance. They presumed it was a subchloride, however, the product was probably a colloidal mixture of the metal and rubidium chloride. In a second attempt to produce metallic rubidium, Bunsen was able to reduce rubidium by heating charred rubidium tartrate. Although the distilled rubidium was pyrophoric, they were able to determine the density and the melting point. The quality of this research in the 1860s can be appraised by the fact that their determined density differs less than 0.1 g/cm3 and the melting point by less than 1 degree C from the presently accepted values. The slight radioactivity of rubidium was discovered in 1908, but that was before the theory of isotopes was established in 1910, and the low level of activity made interpretation complicated. The now proven decay of 87RB to stable 87SR through beta decay was still under discussion in the late 1940s. Rubidium had minimal industrial value before the 1920s. Since then, the most important use of rubidium is research and development, primarily in chemical and electronic applications. In 1995, rubidium 87 was used to produce a Bose-Einstein condensate, for which the discoverers, Eric Allen Cornell, Carl Edwin Wieman and Wolfgang Ketorl, won the 2001 Nobel Prize in Physics. Rubidium compounds are sometimes used in fireworks to give them a purple color. Rubidium has also been considered for use in a thermoelectric generator using the magnetohydrodynamic principle, where hot rubidium ions are passed through a magnetic field. These conduct electricity and act like an armature of a generator thereby generating an electric current. Rubidium particularly vaporized 87RB, is one of the most commonly used atomic species employed for laser cooling and Bose-Einstein condensation. Its desirable features for this application include the ready availability of inexpensive diode laser light at the relevant wavelength, and the moderate temperatures required to obtain substantial vapor pressures. For cold atom applications requiring tunable interactions, 85RB is preferable due to its rich feshback spectrum. Rubidium has been used for polarizing 3HE, producing volumes of magnetized 3HE gas, with the nuclear spins aligned rather than random. Rubidium vapor is optically pumped by a laser and the polarized RB polarizes 3HE through the hyperfine interaction. Such spin polarized 3HE cells are useful for neutron polarization measurements and for producing polarized neutron beams for other purposes. The resonant element in atomic clocks utilizes the hyperfine structure of rubidium's energy levels, and rubidium is useful for high precision timing. It is used as the main component of secondary frequency references in cell site transmitters and other electronic transmitting, networking, and test equipment. These rubidium standards are often used with GPS to produce a primary frequency standard that has greater accuracy and is less expensive than cesium standards. Such rubidium standards are often mass-produced for the telecommunication industry. Other potential or current uses of rubidium include a working fluid in vapor turbines, as a getter in vacuum tubes, and as a photocell component. Rubidium is also used as an ingredient in special types of glass, in the production of superoxide by burning in oxygen, in the study of potassium ion channels in biology, and as the vapor in atomic magnetometers. In particular, 87RB is used with other alkali metals in the development of spin exchange relaxation free magnetometers. Rubidium 82 is used for positron emission tomography. Rubidium is very similar to potassium and tissue with high potassium content will also accumulate the radioactive rubidium. One of the main uses is myocardial perfusion imaging. As a result of changes in the blood brain barrier in brain tumors, Rubidium collects more in brain tumors than normal brain tissue, allowing the use of radioisotope rubidium-82 in nuclear medicine to locate and image brain tumors. Rubidium-82 has a very short half-life of 76 seconds, and the production from decay of strontium-82 must be done close to the patient. Rubidium was tested for the influence on manic depression and depression. Dialysis patients suffering from depression show a depletion in rubidium and therefore a supplementation may help during depression. In some tests the rubidium was administered as rubidium chloride with up to 720 mg per day for 60 days. 
rubidium reacts violently with water and can cause fires. To ensure safety and purity, this metal is usually kept under a dry mineral oil or sealed in glass ampoules in an inert atmosphere. Rubidium forms peroxides on exposure even to small amount of air diffused into the oil, and storage is subject to similar precautions as the storage of metallic potassium. Rubidium, like sodium and potassium, almost always has plus one oxidation state when dissolved in water, even in biological contexts. The human body tends to treat Rb and ions as if they were potassium ions, and therefore concentrates rubidium in the body's intracellular fluid. The ions are not particularly toxic, a 70 kg person contains on average 0.36 g of rubidium, and an increase in this value by 50 to 100 times did not show negative effects in test persons. The biological half-life of rubidium in humans measures 3146 days. Although a partial substitution of potassium by rubidium is possible, when more than 50% of the potassium in the muscle tissue of rats was replaced with rubidium, the rats died. 